I lean in just enough so that my mouth rests gently against hers. We kiss upside down, her bottom lip between both of mine. Her lips are like a soft explosion, igniting hidden mind fields under every inch of my skin. It's weird and fascinating because she was still on her back, floating on the top of the water. I dip my tongue into her mouth and for whatever reason I don't feel worthy enough to touch her. So I keep my arms where they are, gripping the pole on either side of me. She keeps her arms outstretched and the only thing she moves in her mouth. I am thankful our first kiss is upside down because that leaves a hell of a lot of room to anticipate kissing her right side up for the first time. I am never going to want to kiss a girl again without being high on whatever it is the bride gave us. It's like my heart contracts uh, to the size of a penny and then balloons to the size of a drum with every beat. It isn't beating like it's supposed to. There is no gentle boom, 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 boom anymore. It's a plink and a boom. Plink, boom, plink, boom, plink, boom. I cannot keep kissing her upside down like this. It's making me crazy like we don't quite fit. And I want my mouth to fit perfectly against hers. I grab her waist and spin her on the top of the water until she was facing me. And then I pull her to me. Her legs go around my waist and both of her hands come up out of the water and grip the back of my head which causes her to sink a little because now I am the only thing keeping her above water. But my own arms are too busy sliding down her back so we start to sink and neither of us does anything about it. Our mouths locks, lock together right before we, you know, we were submerged. Not a single drop of water passes between our lips. We sink all the way to the bottom of the pole, still fused together. As soon as we hit bottom, we open our eyes at the same time and pull apart to look at each other. Her hair is floating above her now and she looks like a sunken angel. I wish I could take a picture. Air bubbles cloud the space between us so we both kick ourselves back to the top. I break the surface two seconds before she does. We were facing each other ready to start the kiss over again. We link together back into the same position we were in. Our mouths seek each other out but as soon as I taste the chlorine on her lips, we were interrupted by chants. I can hear Garrett over several of the others all cheering our kiss on from where they were seated. Layla glances behind her and flips them off. She separates herself from me and pushes to the side of the pool. Let's go, she says, pulling herself out of the water. She isn't graceful about it. She pushes, pushes up out of the deep end five feet from the ladder and has to roll onto the concrete to make it out of the pole. It's clumsy and perfect. I follow her. And a few seconds later, we were both running around the side of the house where it was darker and more private. The grass is both cold and soft beneath my feet, like ice but melted. I guess that would uh, just make, uh, make it water. But it doesn't feel like water. It feels like melted ice. Drugs make things hard to explain. Layla graves my hand and falls onto the melted ice, gra ice grass, pulling me down with her on, the, on top of her. I hold myself up with my elbows so she can breathe and I stare at her for a moment. She has got freckles. Not very many and they were spread out over the bridge of her nose. A few on her cheeks, I left my hand and traced them. Where are you? Why are you so pretty? She laughs rightfully, so that was cheesy. She flips me onto the back, onto my back, and then pull, and she pulls her dress up, her thighs, so she can straddle me. Her thighs suction to my sides because we were both sopping wet. I rest my hands on her hips. 
and shock up the intensity of this high. Do you know why they call this place the Corazon del Pais? She asks. I don't know. So I just shake my head and hope it's a long story so I can hear her talk more than she has. I could listen to her voice all night. In fact, there is a room inside the bed and breakfast they call the Grand Room. And it's lined with hundreds of books on every wall she could read to me all night. It translates the heart of the country, she says. There is excitement in her eyes and voice when she talks. This location, this very piece of property you are laying on is the lateral geographical center of the contagious United States. Maybe it's because I am very aware of my heartbeat right now but that doesn't make sense why would they call it that they hurt the hurt isn't really the center of the body the stomach is she love she loves her her shots quick laugh again true but a stomago del pias doesn't sound as pretty fuck you speak french Pretty sure that Spanish. Either way, it was hot. I only took one year in high school. She says, I have no hidden talents. What you see is what you get. I doubt that. I roll her off me and, and pin her wrists to the grass as I roll onto, on top of her. You are a talented dancer. She laughs. I kiss her. We kiss for several minutes. We more than kiss. We touch, we move, we moan. Everything is way too much like I am teetering on the edge of the death. My heart just might literally explode in my chest. I am starting to wonder if we would, if we should keep this doing. Drugs coupled with making out with Layla is one thing too much. I cannot let her stay raped around me for another second or I will pass the fuck out from everything I am feeling. It's like every nerve ending grew a nerve ending. I feel everything with double the magnitude. I have to stop. I whisper unwrapping her legs from around me. What the hell are we on? I can't breathe. I roll onto my back, gasping for air. You mean what did my sister give you? The bride is your sister? Yeah, her name is Aspen. She... She is three years older than me. Layla lifts herself up onto, the, onto her elbow. Why? Do you like it? I nod. Yes, I love it. It's intense. Right? Fuck yes. Aspen gives it to me every time I drink too much. She leans in until her mouth is against my ear. It's called aspirin. When she pulls back, the confusion on my face makes her grin. Did you think you were high? Why else would I be feeling like this? I sit up. That wasn't an aspirin. She falls onto her back in a fit of laughter, making a cross over her chest. Swear to God, you took an aspirin. She was laughing so hard, she has to fight to catch her breath. When she finally does, she sighs and it's delightful. And did I just fucking say delightful? She shakes her head, looking up at me with a soft smile. It's not drugs making you feel like this. Leads, she stands up and makes her way around to the front of the house. Again, I follow her because if that really was an aspirin, then I am fucked. I am fucked. I didn't know another person could make me feel this good without some sort of substance running through my body. Layla doesn't go to a bedroom once we are inside the house. She, she walks into the grand room, the one with all the books and the baby grand piano. When we were both inside, the clo she closes the door and locks it. My jeans and her dress are leaving a trail of water behind us. When I pause and turn to look at her, she was staring at the water pouring beneath my feet. The floors are old, she says. She should respect them. She pulls her soaking wet dress over her head and now she was standing in the dimly lit room five feet away from me in nothing but her bra and panties. They don't match. She was wearing a white bra and green and black checkered panties. 
and I kind of love that she didn't put much thought into what she wore under her dress. I observe her for a moment, admiring her curves and the, and the way she doesn't try to hide pieces of herself from me. My last girlfriend and I had a body that could rival a uh, supermodels but she was never comfortable with herself it became one of the things that irritated me about her because no matter how beautiful she was her insecurity was the loudest thing about her Layla carries herself with a confidence that would be attractive no matter what she looked like I do as she requested and remove my jeans leaving on my boxes Layla gathers our cloth is and puts them on top of a rug that's probably worth more than the floors but whatever she makes her feel good i look around the moon uh, i looked around the room and there was a brown distressed leather couch against the wall next to the piano i want to throw her on it and lose myself inside of her but leila has different plans she pulls the piano bench out and sits on it can you sing? She asks, poking at a few of the keys. Yes. Why don't you sing on stage? It's Garrett's band. He has never asked me Asked me to. Garrett, is that the lead singer's name? That's the one. Is he as atrocious as his lyrics? That makes me laugh. I shake my head and join her on the bench. She was pretty terrible, but he was not as bad as his lyrics. She presses middle C on the piano. Is he jealous of you? She asks. Why would be why would he be jealous of me? I am just the bass player. He was not lead singer material. You are. That's a big statement. You have never even heard me sing. Doesn't matter. You could be terrible, but everyone else still fades into the background when you are on stage. Just like the rest of the crowd fades into the background when you were dancing. I was the only one dancing, see, I didn't even notice. She leans in after I said it, and I expect her to kiss me, but instead she whispers, play me something against my mouth. Then she moves to the couch and lies down, play something worthy of that piano, she says. She crosses her legs at her ankles and lets one of her arms dangle off the couch. She runs her finger against the hardwood floor while she waits for me to start playing but I cannot stop staring at her. I am not sure there was another woman on this planet who could make me want to stare at her without blinking until my eyes dry up. But she was looking at me expectantly. What if you don't like my music? I ask. Will you still let me kiss you? She smiles gently. Does the song mean something to you? I wrote it using pieces of my soul. Then you have nothing to worry about, she says quietly. I spin around on the bench and place my fingers on the keys. I hesitate for a moment before playing the song. I have never, I have never performed it for anyone before. The only person I have ever wanted to sing it for is my father. And he was no longer alive. His death is the reason I wrote this in the first place. I have never been nervous while playing Garrett's song on stage, but this feels different. This is personal and despite the fact that there was only one person in the audience right now, it feels like the most intense audience I have ever performed for. I fill my lungs with air and slowly release it as I began to play. That night I stopped believing in heaven. I cannot believe in a God that cruel, can you? That night I stopped praying on my knees, but I don't pray standing either, do you? That night I closed the door and closed the window. I have been sitting in the dark, are you? That night I learned happiness is a fairy tale. A thousand pages read aloud by you. That night I stopped believing in God. You were ours. He didn't care. He took you. So that I night stopped. I stopped. I just stopped. That night I stopped. I stopped. I just stopped. That night I stopped. I... When I am finishing playing the song, I fold my hands in my lap. I am a little hesitant to turn around the, uh, turn around and look at her. 
the whole room got quiet after i played the last note so quiet it feels like all the sound was sucked out of the house i cannot even hear her breathing i closed the cover to the piano and then slowly spin around onto the bench she was wiping her eyes staring up at the ceiling wow she whispered i wasn't expecting it i feel like you just stormed on my chest that's how i have felt since i first laid eyes on her tonight i like how it ends she says she sits up on the couch and tucks her legs beneath her she just stopped in the middle of the sentence it's so perfect so powerful